Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be going over how to get started with Notion. As you might already know, most of my YouTube videos are focusing on Notion automations and Notion formulas, but in this one, we're going to be going over the Notion basics, how to navigate Notion confidently. I'll be going over how to create your own page, how to customize those pages, how to explore templates, and I'll be going over some of the aspects of the sidebar as well as important navigational features. As you know, most of my videos on this channel are already about databases, so I won't be touching on that too much. But in today's video, I want to make it so that whether you're just getting started or whether you've been using Notion for a year, I hope that there's some valuable content and processes that I can showcase with you all today. Right now, I just created a untitled Notion page. And as you can see, when you do create a new page, you have these things that pop up, right? The empty page, these add new sections. If you click on add more, you see all the database views that are available in Notion. So if you click on any one of these six views, we'll create a database table with that view, right? So if I click on this, we'll get a table. For beginners, it's really healthy to start with the empty page section. All those other database views we can explore later on as you get more comfortable with Notion. And I guess while we're here, I'm using the desktop app. And so with the desktop app, you can create new tabs and you can do a bunch of stuff. You can create new tabs and you can right click on it to move tabs, close tabs, and it sort of functions similar to a browser. And so if I do this, get this, and then if I want to split the screen, I can also do that. Right. If you have trouble organizing your things or you want to see more than one Notion screen, this is a very easy way to do that. Right now I have it zoomed in pretty good for the viewers, but I just wanted to show that cool attribute about the taps on the desktop view. Can't really do that on the browser view, but you can just copy a link and duplicate it manually. I just do like the new tab and the window ability of Notion here. Even before we get started here, I want to get over and talk about these four icons and the three dots. You know, even before we start writing anything, filling in the space, I would say these four dots can be immensely helpful if you know what they mean as you move forward and go on your journey with Notion. So if you do share, it's nice that it tells you kind of a dialogue box of what it does. I think when you're just starting, you might have a little bit of this. As you can see, you can directly send people an invite and you can customize the settings of how you want to share it. And you can publish it online, publish it to the web. So it's a public page that you can share the link of. You can also toggle some of the settings, right? Um, obviously you need the plus account for some of these features, but most people won't need it off the bat. I published it, unpublished it, now it's gone. This is a view all comments section. So if you're just working on Notion by yourself, this might not be as helpful, but if you're working on a team with a page that has important information, this is a really great place to check comments. Similar to Google Drive and Google Docs, you can see all the updates of the page through this clock icon. And as you can see, you can see the updates I made here. It also tells you the analytics. I wouldn't rely too much on this, but it's just a fun feature they added. Yeah, so this is really valuable to track everything, right? And then you can also restore the version if you feel like you made a big mistake or some changes accidentally got saved. Once you get out of there, this is the favorite section. And this just allows you to favorite it in your sidebar there, right? Notice how it's the favorite section. If I unclick it, it disappears, right? But since I have no favorited items, which I think will be the case when you are just getting started, my first thing would be to favorite it, right? So that frequency of documents are readily accessible. You can find it on your sidebar really quickly. Most people might not know about this, but you can also click on these headers to shrink or expand relevant items in Notion here. I guess we've gone through the three icons and then the three dots. So this is where I think you have the most customization across these four icons, but I do think it's a really great place to start if you know what you're looking for. We have these different fonts you can choose from. You can do small text, as you can see it shrinks the text there full width, which means that it expands the page to the full width of the screen. In default, it starts at this narrow column view. So if you just, the column kind of looks like that. And then if you do full width, it expands. The full width toggle is a very easy way to create more space without having to create new pages or new sections. These three dots allow you to do a lot more than one might think on the surface. Good ones are export and import. If you deleted something, you can also search by deleted pages. If you want to customize it right, there's ways to show backlinks, minimal page comments, all that stuff. So now that we know how to sort of customize stuff, use our sidebar and start creating pages. I think a really healthy place to start is to start with a slash. And the slash just basically allows you to open a menu of items that you can scroll. So you can immediately 
find what you might find useful in your case. We're all used to typing stuff out, but how can we organize that text better through headers, through different lists, a toggle, a quote, right, to emphasize it, divider to signify a new section or a new content divider. I think this callout is really helpful. It allows you to sort of emphasize and create a border and an icon set fit other blocks that you see here. You can do emoji, you can basically do slash and then type what you're looking for. So like list, right, you have all these options here. Header, you have three headers, right? I think I'm gonna do the call out first. What's nice about every block that you add is when you hover over the block, notice how each block has six dots pop up. And when you click on it, you get this menu, this beautiful menu. And this is where you can sort of, similar to these three dots page, start to customize stuff. You can do that with any of these blocks. You can delete it, duplicate it, turn it into a different element, which is helpful. You can turn it into a page. You can copy the link to a block, which I'll explain later. And then you can also color it, right? Although the features are limited, you know, it's an easy way to emphasize, customize, and color your stuff. It's pastel colors, so choose wisely, blue text, blue background, right? And so the callout, like I said, you can drag, click and drag, and then you can drag blocks into the callout. You can move this up and down. You can fit it below things. And so we have a toggle here. Because it's empty, it's light gray. And then if you add something, it turns black. So what you can do now is if you wanted to hide this callout here, drag it, it'll highlight. Same here, drag it, watch it highlight, drop it, boom. Now when you toggle, you can see all that at once. This is a really great way to condense text, sort of when you only need to see it every so often. I think it's helpful. You can move this right anywhere. And again, what's cool is if you were to create another page, for example, favorite it, move page. So let's just say we have that sidebar. And let's say we want to move this to over here. What we can also do is click, drag it over to the page. And what that does is when you click on it, oh, it appears here, right? Back here. Notice how it moved one block to getting started with Notion, right? And then once you that notification pops up, you can click on Visit, which I missed there. So let me show you that. Visit, right? And then it takes you straight to the block that you moved. Click and drag is also helpful, but you can also just click on the six dots, move to, and then specify a page based on searched keyword criteria, which I think is also helpful. And this is a more direct way to move stuff. And again, you can highlight several things by click and dragging like you would computer. And again, move it that way. And now because we took everything off, it's suggesting that we create an empty page or a bunch of other stuff, right? And then now we have this move three blocks. You can visit it. It's all here. So same here. But now we can click on this move to, and then it's going to suggest some things. We'll do getting started with Notion. Right now we just reversed that process and it looks like that. When you're thinking about Notion, everything is transferable. You can move anything to anywhere and you can do it through single blocks, through highlighted text, through selection, through click and drag, and so on and so forth. I think a really nice thing about Notion is the slash embed. And this basically is if you have a link that you want to put in here, you can just paste it in and Notion's going to sort of responsively configure what you're looking for or what you want to add. I'm going to add my YouTube channel in and see what happens. So it's going to have that nice little bookmark that shows. This also happens when you copy or paste any link into your space, right? So if you copy paste a link, it'll say dismiss, create bookmark, or create it. And so we can do create embed. Create embed is a literal way to explore the page. If I do that same thing and create a bookmark, it looks kind of like this. And it'll show you the link and then sort of the header text or the meta description the title tags of the page, right? And then embed, right, if you want to actually navigate everything, you can do that as well. A few ways to think about embedding and pasting links into Notion, because Notion will responsibly tell you, do you want to just create a bookmark like this, or do you want to create it so that you can interact with what you're working with? That's pretty cool about Notion. And I think before I go any further, I want to remind everyone that Notion is, has a steep learning curve, and so you should go at your own pace, you should learn at your own pace, you should explore at your own pace. And so ultimately, you have your own way of understanding Notion, and you're not trying to fit someone else's definition of how they understand Notion into the way you want to learn. Maybe there's some inspiring ways to explore Notion, but I think ultimately the best way to learn is just to continuously explore. These three dots alone and all of these blocks provide so much customizability and flexibility. And even from a media standpoint, you have code, video, audio, any file. 
And then we haven't even talked about the databases, which I feel like are more than half, if not 75% of what I think Notion is useful for in terms of customization and organization. And I think before we get to databases, there are tables. So if you do slash tables, you get this very simple Excel feeling like table. You can add columns by hovering and adding the plus. You can also add a header column or a header row or both. It just feels pretty fluid. This is a basic table and this is nowhere near what a database in Notion feels like. You can't manipulate these cells. This is purely for temporary, short-term, one-time use information organization that you can actually manipulate with the database views, which is which is critical if you want to organize a lot of information in one place, print it in various ways. You're not going to want to use the simple table, and you're going to want to use a database. The biggest distinction between a database and a table is huge. You know, a database is, becomes its own page, and it has these structured table elements. It has different properties and feature characteristics, and then you also have very different layouts as well. Sometimes people get confused between what a table and a database is. So it's good to sort of understand that distinction off the bat. I think something I haven't really mentioned, I think this is probably the juiciest bit for beginners, is when you create a new page, you have the ability to select templates. When you create a new page, you can select database pages that you want to create. You can import stuff, you can create an empty page, you can start writing with AI. The one thing I will say about AI is it's a freemium feature. And so if you want to use more than 10 or 20 commands through Notion AI, you have to sort of pay a monthly premium of $10 or something like that to, to activate unlimited uses on a monthly subscription basis. Back to templates. When you create a new page, you can also hover to templates. And when you click on that, you get this big window, all these different things. So there's a big scroll wheel with all of these sort of industry specific, niche specific, uh, professional specific templates. In this case, because we're in the work view, we're seeing all of these product marketing, engineering, design templates use, like get template for free. And so you can start exploring right away instead of having to create something from scratch when you're thinking about databases. And so every one of these things basically founded on a series of databases that are connected and that are grouped, sorted, and filtered by different views. So if you wanna explore that right away, I would jump immediately to templates and start exploring the different types of examples and templates that you might be able to use right away, right? You don't have to sort of start from scratch. I think that's a big misconception coming into a notion as a newbie is where do I start? I think there's endless ways to start. As you can see, personal, even from a habit tracker to a resume to just basic projects, right? There's a lot of project management stuff. A wiki, if it's a knowledge base or company home, there's a lot of ways to sort of structure this and get inspiration from. You can get the template and it just looks right away like that. That was instantaneous. You can create a new page, template, kind of want a, uh, you know, a life wiki. Let's get started there. So when you do that, I think it takes a sec to load. There it is. Although it's simple, although it's rudimentary, it's a good place to start customizing, learning not only what you like, but also learning what you don't know is possible. Notion. And these are very basic ways of organizing information, but obviously it's a great way place to start. I don't want to dismiss those templates. And I think the other thing to mention here is the Notion template library. We explored some templates that are available through the page creation options, but here if we go to the Notion template gallery, we can choose even more community oriented templates that people have shared through Notion's template gallery. There's over 5,000 templates here, and it's even more categorized than what we saw in that initial template view. We have the same categories that we saw, but in this case, because people are directly posting on here, it's a different caliber and different set of available free and paid templates that people have shared. It's a really great place to explore, but if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be kind of overwhelming because there's so much. If you go to school templates, it's not just coursework, it's teaching, it's clubs, school applications, academic research. You can use these toggles, whether it's created by Notion, which is they actually have a pretty decent amount, but if you want to look at community specific you can do creators and again let's look at free only. you can also use popular most duplicated recently added and it's just going to be a basic scroll wheel of endless endless templates so if you're watching this video and you're considering to be a template creator I just want to show you what the competition looks like here are you creating something that's already out there are you just copying someone is it better to focus on something else instead of creating templates to monetize. What's your sort of skill set within Notion? And should it just be a tool for you to organize and not for you to sort of monetize your stuff? Um, and that's kind of the direction I'm headed is, is through creating and 
consulting, I can sort of tap into what I've created in the past and sort of improve them. Because as you can imagine, it's you're competing in an ocean of creators, and you never know what people are working on. I think the beauty of this is you can pick and choose the things you like from these individual templates and learn how to create them. And not just copies. These are generically created templates meant so that people can start to do what they're describing, as well as sort of their own take on a certain topic or a certain subject. Again, don't let someone else's definition of the SWOT analysis or a client dashboard deter you from changing it or naming it, right? And to own your customization. I think the last thing that I forgot to mention that I really like to use and that I feel like is fun to explore and play around with are adding separate columns and numerically based columns to your pages, right? So I haven't mentioned columns at all of my video yet, and I think it's worth introducing at the very end here. And that is to do slash and type it numer numerically how many columns you might need. So if I wanted three, notice how three columns pops up. What that does is it creates a line here, right? One creates a line here, two creates a line three. And as you can see, you can't really see the column but as you can hover around, these six dots appear. And again, that's a very helpful way to know the columns. We can click and drag, right? And when you're dragging, it'll let you know when you've entered the column by having the blue line just hover into column, right? So even this, do that. Another thing is to drag the width of the column to create more space. And so you can imagine how much more customizability you might have. So, and sometimes what's cool is you can click and notice how when I click and drag this vertical blue line appears and that means that you can put it next to each other to create two columns so when I let go they neatly stack next to each other and they are next to each other in parallel say with this hide stuff I can drag and click it next to this title and that vertical line comes up and now I can separate the title and this into two columns. And there's a little bit of space there. We can find that and get delete it. And then we can maybe perhaps add a div for a divider. And maybe we can make that the full, instead of a column, the full width, right? This is how you can start compartmentalizing um, the way you structure your pages and databases. The toggle is very handy. When you search up toggle, you can also do a heading toggle. So you can do, um, right? That could be the toggle. You can add your resource there. Possibilities are endless, and I just want to introduce those columns at the end so that you can start creating these more boxed, compartmentalized dashboards while you get started with Notion. I think this is going to be a two-part video series, and next video we'll sort of explore databases and a sort of a rough introduction to them so that do a deep dive and just focus on the one thing instead of uh, going over all the settings and template stuff that we did today. If you stuck around this long, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, that would be much appreciated. I'm thinking of doing my giveaway soon and receiving enough traction on my YouTube post it to be something that I want to prioritize. So if you can think of anything that you'd want me to give away to all subscribers, let me know in the comments. Yeah, have a great one. Thanks for watching.